Uh, we've made it to a Degenerate Friday. A very pleasant good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show here on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV, our various other platforms. That is Mike Luby Lubitz, and I am Jeff DeForest. You are looking at a man, and if I was going to make a self-admission here, and we often talk about uh, learning to read the signs from the gods of gambling, you're looking at a man that in 1973, in June, was standing at the rail at Belmont Park, and I decided while attending the Belmont Stakes to bet against Secretary. Think about that for a second. Five fucking horses in the field, one of which is Secretary, who's about to win the race by over 30 lengths, break a record, shatter the track record that still stands to this day as the fastest mile and a half ever run in Belmont Stakes history, which goes back 350 fucking years, Jesus. and I bet against him. <laughs> and you're going to take my advice on the Minnesota series against the Dallas Mavericks? My God, Luby. They were trying to suck you in last night, giving you four and a half points with the Mavericks, weren't they? Yeah. Just trying to suck you in. And you were thinking, all right, I, you, you got me. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and bet the Mavs. But, uh, wow, what a blowout that turned out to be. So we couldn't have been any more wrong. Uh, of the five games in the series, I picked the loser in yes. all five games. Pretty incredible. Now, if you are betting, I'm hoping you're having better luck than that. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA and the NHL playoffs. Both very exciting. We got a win last night here in South Florida with our Florida Panthers and uh, got a little bit of a price on that. This season is the place uh, for uh, all of your NBA and NHL action on Bet Online, every stat, every matchup, and even live odds while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of uh, poker, blackjack, or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today and get in on all the action. Don't forget to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% uh, welcome bonus on your very first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. All right, uh, Luby, I, I, I know you want to begin with the uh, Florida Panthers, but I, I have to say this, that there is nothing better in being a, a stone and self-admitted degenerate than having early morning European action that you can bet on. But this uh, kind of, and the reason I brought up the whole secretariat thing is, uh, how do you bet against a sure thing? If you're betting against a sure thing, I, I know it's happened a few times, right? Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson. Did anybody have Buster that night? I don't think so. <laughs> did we know if you had had some inside information, as we often talk about, did you know that Tyson was training on uh, Saki and Geisha girls? <laughs> the entire time leading up to the fight, or he was going to have these uh, ridiculous corner men after he had fired the guys that had worked with them on his way up, and uh, they're actually going to try and stick a water balloon on his eyeball to see if they can bring the swelling down. Uh, we, we didn't know that this was going to be some Meshuggah upset, and that Douglas, in spite of uh, Tyson's uh, indiscretions, was still going to have to fight the fight of his life and peel himself off the mat, off the canvas, to uh, actually end up winning that fight. And uh, then Don King is screaming about a long count as if it was Dempsey Tunney. Seven, eight, nine. But, uh, yeah, you, you would have hit it 45 to one. It's happened a couple of times where you have these outrageous upsets. You had it with uh, the little short, fat Mexican guy, Andy Ruiz. Can I say that without getting – it's no filter. What are we talking about, Luke? There you go. Andy Ruiz beats Anthony Joshua. That had to be like 40 to 1. Oh, that was but in, in general, I, I'm thinking, how do, how do the books entice people to uh, bet on the underdog in these kind of matches? And I wake up this morning. Now, I turned it on at 6 o'clock in the morning. So if you're out in Las Vegas betting this thing, it was 3 a.m. Imagine wandering, stumbling into a sports book, hoping there's somebody there to take your action. I guess you may as well just have the app and punch it up on Bet Online, even if you're standing in the middle of Caesar's Palace. What would be a viable approach, but uh, three in the morning. And uh, would you ever do this, Libby? Would you ever lay like eight hundred to win a hundred? No. That was uh, the uh, posted odds uh, line on Coco Goff versus Diana Yastremska. No relation to Carl, but uh, eight to one. You're gonna you're gonna lay eight to one, eight hundred to win a hundred uh, on a, a tennis match. Which uh, how do they get anybody? I, I would imagine that they could get everybody to bet Yastrzemska there and just take a shot maybe on the upset. I think Osaka was 11-1 uh, in her match uh, with Sviatek, who she ended up barely losing to, but nonetheless, she ended up on losing side. So no matter how well she played, all of your money went into the Bunsen burner, right into the furnace, and is now ashes. I mean, you talk about ashes to ashes, it's money to ashes if you're taking some of these uh, overwhelmingly what would seems like uh, overpriced uh, underdogs in matches. But uh, what, would you ever do that? Could you see yourself? Do, who, who goes out and does that? Who, who bets like $4,000 to win 500 
on any proposition because uh, you just never know. I mean, uh, Coco Golf turns an ankle. Next thing you know, you're out four grand in an attempt to win 500. Uh, I, I, I just, I don't know who makes those kind of wagers, but. Well, we have our friend in Vegas who does things like that, but it's like, to me, at least he usually is like betting thousands to win thousands. Like, yeah. To me, I, 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 I still don't even get that one. Like, I, I'm more of a, I'm not a parlay guy, but I like finding an underdog that's interesting at like three or four to one going not throwing a little bit on it to try and win a lot more more of your horse racing um style like but to me to throw a lot because again you do get those upsets so you've now not only thrown a thousand to win a hundred you then lost a fucking thousand <laughs> yes how many times do you have to win there there was a guy that was circulating i talked about him many times i was fascinated by this as were many people in the media and uh, anytime this guy showed up at the track he was known as the phantom plunger i don't even know if it was a guy we, we never knew who it was yeah. But uh, you would see all of a sudden 50,000, 100,000 would show up in one flash on the favorite in the show pool. And the show pool automatically has to pay a minimum of five cents on the dollar. So you're talking about a 5% uh, return on your investment of $100,000. But what would you really risk a hundred grand to win five? I mean, it was a vicarious thrill. I, I, you know, what we were always wondering oh, what happens if this guy loses one and sure enough four horse photo one day his horse finishes fourth hundred thousand up in smoke you now have to win your next 20 bets <laughs> to get yeah. back to even it's insane it, it really is it's kind of like these 20 element parlays that uh, people are making which uh, obviously are fueling uh, enough That's of cool. the bankrolls of uh, FanDuel, DraftKings, and all these other sites uh, to keep them offering you uh, tremendous bonuses yeah. just for signing up because they know what the hell once yes. you're in, you're probably going to keep betting. So, uh, yes. and there's a pretty good chance if you're uh, betting uh, in, in those kind of situations uh, and laying a thousand dollars to win a hundred that uh, you're going to end up a loser, which yes. uh, is unfortunately where we stand with that basketball series. Uh, I, I saw an interview with uh, Mark Cuban a couple of weeks before the playoffs got underway. And, and he was touting the fact that uh, Dallas was playing great basketball and had a shot to win it all. And I, I'm a Mark Cuban fan. I, I like the fact that he was openly defiant about things uh, that David Stern was doing, and he was bitching and complaining about officiating and, and uh, situations that seemed to be unfair. Maybe he was a little unhinged at the time. Would you agree, Luby? What was uh, Cuban? He wasn't perceived as a very likable figure. <laughs> But now I, I love the guy. I mean, I love listening to him talk about basketball in the NBA. And he was talking about the Dallas Mavericks. And what could you help but think as you were listening to him say, yeah, you know what? We have every chance to win the West and maybe win the title. And you thought, dreamer, that's not happening because everything was going to go through Denver, Denver. So what happens? Minnesota takes care of Denver. And then, wow, did they lay an egg in this series or what, Luby? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought they would at least be very contentious in this game last night. They're blown out at halftime. 69 to 40 and uh luka Doncic once again an amazing game kyrie irving and so the finals are now set as uh you'll have that tandem going against uh jalen brown and jason tatum and the rest of the cast of the boston celtics and i, I think i saw just a glimpse that the celtics would be favored in the series so uh, i i would tend to lean towards dallas so. but then again i did bet against secretary i, I was gonna say i mean we haven't really been spot in the nba playoffs have been all over the goddamn place um, but look, the funny thing is, and a northeastern friend of ours, and I'm, they're all coming out, uh, going against the, the truth that they've had a soft route. I mean, it's just a fact. They've literally every team they faced was without their best player at, le at least half the series, and two of the teams were without their fourth best player the entire series. So that's us. And they had uh, okay, you didn't have Porzingis, like I've said, you're never gonna have Porzingis, he's <laughs> Porzingis. He literally wasn't hurt at all this year and only played 50 something games. Not hurt. Like, I, I think you called him a fragile string bean at one yeah, point. He, he, he's you might have even him. thrown in an, uh, an expletive in there. Fragile he's fucking a, string bean. I think that's where you characterize him. He's fragile as fuck, is what I would <laughs> characterize him. He, he doesn't play in the playoffs. It's just who he is. And you're not. he's not going to play now. So he doesn't count. And again, he's like your fourth or fifth best player. You had your entire team, and every team you played has missed at least their best player. And in the Pacer series, we're talking about bet online and spreads, you only covered one spread. Like, as we know as gamblers, that's all that matters. If you're not covering spreads, who gives a shit about a win no cover? How could like, you be considered a great team? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're, you're like, you're not playing dominant basketball. You're there, and that's fine. But to talk shit, oh, 
you these people don't get it we got there yeah you got there by fucking bullshit like you I, I think uh, if there was another round of the eastern conference playoffs so uh, they were going to put them in against the washington generals <laughs> Red Klotz uh, was going to come back from the grave and oppose Red Auerbach, two of the great Reds outside of Holtzman that have coached basketball in their lifetime. Klotz doesn't get the credit he deserves for winning that one game against That's impossible it. circumstances. But uh, I, I don't know how anybody could see it any other way, but that uh, this was the softest ride that the Celtics could possibly. Uh, I, they couldn't have dreamt this up. I mean, you talk about path of least resistance. That's what they faced. It doesn't mean that they don't have a chance against the Dallas right. Mavericks. But uh, the Mavericks playing in what was considered to be a vastly superior Western Conference in terms of depth of quality teams and also uh, dealing with teams that, that were playing uh, j just lights out basketball uh, coming into this NBA final. J you have a little time to mull this one over, but I'd be tempted to take the Mavericks and uh, take the price in this one because uh, I'm like you. I'm not convinced that the Boston Celtics were all that great. Maybe they'll rise to the occasion. And, uh, and up their game a little bit. But I think they have to if they're going to beat yes. the Dallas Mavericks because uh, steamrolling Minnesota like that uh, it was no small accomplishment. I, I don't know that that should be overwhelmingly uh, overlooked by the uh, betting public out there. Uh, meanwhile, I, nobody loves off-season NBA talk more than my partner here on the show, the great Mike Louie Lewitz. <laughs> he doesn't need any games. Uh, he, he doesn't need to go out and participate in sports. All he needs to be a sports fan is off-season NBA speculation, which now is wildly centered around one of your favorite topics, and that is where the hell is Jimmy Butler going to be next year? Everybody oh. wants him all of a sudden except the Heat, which is uh, kind of incredible because uh, – even though Pat Riley uh, had that speech where it was very similar to the time when he was telling LeBron James he's an asshole for leaving the organization, he kind of called out Jimmy Butler. I don't know how sensitive Jimmy is at this point. I don't even know how uh, centralized his focus is on basketball. Because he started doing a lot of other stuff. I, I don't usually consider the distraction thing to be too significant. But in, in this case, he's done everything but uh, get, get – a permanent, uh, consistent role on, uh, you know, the Kardashian show. <laughs> he's everywhere, this guy. Jimmy Butler's Butler, this, that, the other thing. He's at Formula One. He's at tennis. Uh, and yet he did seem detached a lot of the season from yeah. uh, what would normally would be his dynamic role with the Miami Heat. Uh, does he end up in Golden State, Philadelphia? What do you think, Luby? You love this speculation. He's going nowhere. I, that's why I think all this stuff is funny. Like, the, the way he'd go somewhere is for the Heat to do the thing the Heat don't do. I the thing I asked for the Heat to do before they got Jimmy Butler, because they had a horrendous roster that was capped, <laughs> like they had the worst combination of really bad talent that they overpaid. So I was like, all right, let's just start from scratch. Then they got Jimmy Butler and have been to three conference finals and two NBA finals. Like they're not going to do that. So it, I don't know what. And what's funny is it's being fueled by a lot of NBA reporters. People respect. It's like, yes. damn, what are you talking about, dude? Like, have you followed? Pat this Wright. isn't Windhorse popping off on uh, the it's Greenberg Jimmy show on ESPN. Yeah. It's like, guys, what? Like, I, I, see, the NBA reporter used to not only report things, and we, and I, that's why I like our friend Jason Cole, because he, they would report things, but they would also use their logic and sense and their experience and combine the two. Okay, this is the information I'm getting, but I know this guy, right? Like Pat Riley. This is what Pat Riley and our friend Ethan Skolnick, this is why I like him, because he knows the heat. So he'll take information he's getting in and go, yeah, but I also fucking know Pat Riley and I know Eric Spolstra. So the Sixers could want him. Riley's never been that guy, and he's in his late 70s, so he's not going to be that guy now. He's not going to go, yeah, let's rebuild for the next three years. Start from retire. scratch with draft picks, yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like, these are great ideas for Sam Presti. These are great ideas for even a Daryl Morey. Anyone who knows anything about basketball and has followed Pat Riley, this is 100% the opposite of what he does. Five first-round picks is amazing. Okay, what is that team going to be good in 2029? Like, that's not Pat Riley's move. So that's why, like, I'm, it's funny. I do like No, that. and you're, you're battling father time like, uh, you know, all of us are. Yeah, but uh, as you get into your late 70s, you start thinking, do I make it to 80? Wants to win you're now. not worried about 2029 and that season. He wants to win now. He has a team that was in the finals two years ago and honestly would be in the finals right now. I mean, looking at how the Eastern Conference finals shook out, if they had said Jimmy Butler, I like I have I, I'm at, it's at least I've paid attention to the offseason at this point. I'm waiting for June, July because I think there's a lot of bullshit being thrown around. Butler's trying to get a match from the Heat, and his agent, I think, has coaxed a lot of this bullshit because this is exactly what'll probably work to get a match from the Heat. 
he doesn't want to go anywhere. He's made that clear. And the Heat aren't the Heat aren't gonna do what they've done with him, put all this into him to let him go for fucking first round picks that would probably mean nothing. So you're saying he's more likely to be uh, eating baklava and playing in Turkey than he is to uh, leave for another uh, NBA team. By the way, uh, just an observation. I think most people have probably deduced this by now, uh, but uh, that is not Jason Kidd on the uh, Dallas Mavericks sidelines coaching the team. That is Howie Mandel. <laughs> he has left America. Has he not morphed into Howie Mandel? Jason Kidd, he looks exactly like him, even at the press conferences. You're thinking, that's Mandel. He's talking about that circus act where you're spinning the plates on the sticks. Incredible. All right, uh, you were doubtful, you were pessimistic, uh, you had a loser's mentality about your Florida Panthers last night. We originate from South Florida, as we've mentioned many times here on the show. <clears throat> and uh, we had uh, great interest in the Cats and the Rangers because South Florida is New York South uh, as well. And uh, many, many Ranger fans uh, still here. In fact, uh, you could hear it, a uh, crescendo of noise uh, that uh, evolved from the Panthers uh, home ice, uh, Marin Bank uh, Center in Sunrise, Florida, and the Rangers would score as they did in overtime. The place would erupt, and you're thinking, oh, my God, what the hell's going on here? Uh, wasn't the case at Madison Square Garden last night where uh, I think there were like two Panther fans that were allowed in that somehow <laughs> got by the James Dolan scrutiny at the door there. He didn't want any Panther fans in the building. There. I didn't even think I, they, they questioned Paul Maurice to see if he had a credential to get into the game, the coach. But, um, again, uh, the pressing. Uh, of the four-checking Florida Panthers uh, proving to be a little bit too much for the Rangers. They also have shut down the Rangers' power play for the most part and uh, stymied them uh, to a stat that's uh, uh, just alarming, where they were like two for their last 21 on power plays, uh, and or maybe even worse than that. And so uh, the Panthers carve out a victory in uh, what had to be a pivotal game five because the stat popped up frequently during the telecast. Uh, Sean McDonough was doing a broadcast. He must have mentioned this 100 times that the team that wins game five in NHL playoff series goes on to win the series 80% of the time oh, geez. Okay. when a series has been tied 2-2 going in. And that was the situation last night. So uh, you now have a four out of five chance uh, based on past performances that the Panthers will go on and win this thing. Uh, likely, uh, I would think that they clinch it. Uh, they seem to have found a formula to stave off the early – initiative uh, and uh, ambition of the New York Rangers to play them tough. And after they get out of the first period, they, they have dominated the uh, latter portions of these games, and they've been dynamite in the third period all throughout the postseason with the biggest goal differential of any team that's uh, participated in the playoffs uh, in, in the third period. And, of course, uh, they came up with uh, an empty netter in, in the third period and uh, also what turned out to be the uh, game-winning goal. Well, I, actually, uh, the Rangers got one late to make it 3-2, but uh, mm -hmm. I had already turned it off at that point. Once that empty inner netter goes in, and you're really? sitting there realizing that, hey, 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 when can I cash this ticket, Lou? I mean, there's no way they're coming all the way back. But uh, that one goes 3-2, and you have the uh, so-called pivotal game five coming up, Edmonton and Dallas uh, tonight. I just read a very eloquent dissertation about how the stars are going to prevail, so I'm uh, tempted to put all of my money on the Edmonton Oilers okay. and Connor McDavid tonight, uh, Dice Idol and company, to uh, get the job done there and continue to fuel the vicarious thrill we're getting through David Portnoy's $150,000 wager on the Edmonton Oilers to uh, win it all. Uh, golf fans probably been following this story a little bit. Uh, Nelly Corda, who uh, had won six out of seven tournaments that she had entered, going into the LPGA's uh, Women's U.S. Open. And uh, sure enough, she went tin cup on number three, Luby. Mm. Put three straight shots in the water and was out of the tournament by the time she carded a 10 on that hole. So uh, that, that was kind of an interesting development. Uh, Aaron Judge, the only thing hotter than South Florida right now this time of the year is Aaron Judge. My God. Oh, wow. Good Putting on a hell of a show uh, in the month of May after getting off to a slow start. And uh, how'd you like to be Steve Cohen trying to figure out what happened to all your money you spent with the Mets? Labeled by a guy that they sent down to the minors, uh, a guy named, uh, what was it, Jorge uh, Lopez, a reliever uh, of uh, no great distinction. And uh, yet, even though he was having a reasonably good season, statistically, they farmed him out because he had labeled, uh, supposedly, and now he denies it. He, he had said that the Mets are the worst fucking organization in baseball. <laughs> Didn't sit favorably with Steve Cohn, who's just invested like $800 billion in players that uh, couldn't get him out of last place. And uh, that's where they sit right now, pretty much. But weren't for the pathetic Marlins, who have uh, given us a little bit of a scare, Luby, on our inside information. Although they're still playing about 333 baseball, which isn't going to get it done to accomplish the over 
when uh, we have them at 79 wins for the season. I, I still feel comfortable about that, but, uh, you know, there may be a need to start applying and uh, ingesting some kind of medication, no? I'm very comfortable. If we lose this bet, we suck. That's all there is to it. If they get to 70 wins, I will be fucking very impressed. Team gets off to like a one and forty start. I mean, they look like the Baltimore Orioles under Frank Robinson, and uh, we can't get them home at under seventy nine. You have to be kidding me. That would be it. That would be it. Well, we would end our affiliations with all gambling entities, <laughs> and do what a lot of people have been wishing we were going to do or, or had done uh, fifty years ago, and that is just get out of the business. That that would be the way to go. Well, I hope you uh, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, kind of scant uh, offerings. So you have Edmonton and Dallas tonight. That's about it. The Belmont Stakes isn't until next week, and uh, seeing some speculation on that, uh, although uh, it does appear that Sierra Leone is not going to run, right? Uh, and that uh, Bel – no, no, it's Fierceness is not going to run. Fierceness. There I go, giving out bad information again to sucker all the betters into uh, going in another direction. But uh, we hope you guys have nothing but success over the weekend. We will see you guys again on Monday here on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV, and all the other platforms that air the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. From Mike Luby-Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. We'll see you next time on the next edition of The Morning Briefing. 